Hi, Carol. I uh, just want I'm glad that you're able to join us today. Um, so my name is Erin Anderson. I'm the managing editor of CanFit Pro, and today I have Carol Harrison, registered dietitian and one of our members of our advisory panel. And Carol's here today to discuss with us Canada's new food guide. So welcome, Carol. And thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, hi there, Erin. Happy to be here. Good. Thank you so much. I understand you just got back from vacation, so mm -hmm. you had some R&R &R yeah. and ready to go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I was in the Mediterranean for about two weeks. It was pretty spectacular. Oh, awesome. Well, actually, Mediterranean diets are so in the news right now. Can you maybe just give us, before we dive into some of Canada's food, like, can you give mm -hmm. us um, maybe a, some quick points on what you noticed about eating habits yeah, in the Mediterranean? Sure. Yeah, so um, my first time visiting a, a lot of these different um, Greek islands and some new parts of Italy, and, you know, the one thing that really struck out for me was, you know, how much less highly processed foods those folks eat, and they're really into filling their plates with wholesome, naturally nutrient-rich foods like vegetables and fruits, whole grains, and, and even meats. You know, a lot of people think Mediterranean diets are, are low in meats, and we know the research shows that we eat about the same amount of red meat as folks in Mediterranean countries. So what I, I observed that as well, and I thought, you know, what makes the difference is they're not eating as much fast foods and highly processed foods. They're filling their plates with, like, good wholesome foods. And the serving sizes, of course, Erin, you know, whenever you go out to eat, the portion sizes in North America are huge, right? Definitely, and yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can often feed two people, maybe even sometimes three. And there's enough to go uh, home in a doggy bag, definitely. <laughs> if you're not leaving and, with a doggy bag, right? <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the portion sizes seem to be a lot more reasonable as well. So the quality was better, and the portion size were probably more in in tune with what our bodies, most people, would need for a meal. Mm, oh, that sounds interesting. Mm, I have to do a delicious. Yes, <laughs> so I need to visit the Mediterranean very soon. So yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, okay, so can you outline? We'll dive into the Canada's food guide, yeah, maybe. Um, sure. can you outline some of the main differences in the new food guide for us? Yeah, so some people might have caught wind of it on, in the media. Um, some highlights, really, we don't have the four food groups anymore, the, those familiar four food groups. You, probably you and I both grew up with uh, learning in public school. There's no recommended number of portions for different age and sex groups and no serving sizes. And I'll be honest, you know, as a dietitian, I always found that was really hard to communicate to people, you know, depending on your age and your sex. And we know you needed three of this and eight of that and four of that and the serving size is way too complicated, just not practical. So right. I love the new focus, the eat well plate. And um, I bet lots of people have seen this. It's not, it's, it's new in the food guide, but a, a lot of us have been promoting this. So that make half your plate vegetables and fruits, a quarter quality proteins. And that's, um, you know, a mix of animal and plant-based proteins in the protein group and then uh, whole grains. So a quarter whole grains. So the focus is more on meal time. So making those meals balanced and getting the proportions right. And then I'd say another new focus is cutting back on the highly processed foods. About 50% um, of the calories in the Canadian diet come from high calorie nutrient poor foods like sweet cereals, hot dogs, pop and chips. I and mean, that's concerning. And probably, that's pretty yeah, concerning. You and yeah. A lot of us probably grew up like, you know, you might have got pop like at a birthday party or something special exactly. or you'd go, you were, we weren't certainly eating out fast food on a weekly basis, that kind of thing. Um, and I think people have got the right intentions. It's just the pressures of life take over. It makes it hard to eat well um, without some good planning and some help. And the third, I think, focus, uh, new focus really is on the how to eat. So the old food guide really focused on what and how much. And the new food guide is really also adding a new element, which is, Advice around cooking and eating together, cooking and eating at home, enjoying your food, um, eating without distractions, eating mindfully. And I think those are all um, really important messages and, and, and good changes. I'm, I'm overall pleased with the new food guide. Well, that's, that's excellent. I've noticed there's a lot more visual um, representation on the food guide. It's a little bit easier, I, I would think, to understand in terms of seeing um, in, in looking back at what the food guide was and what it is now, yeah. there's a lot more visual. Would you agree that it, it kind mm -hmm. of helps people to be a little bit more, um, to understand it more? Yeah. I mean, just take that eat well plate mm -hmm. in a snapshot, you really capture what it means to eat well. So, and I just, maybe I should highlight one thing that people do find a little bit confusing is they'll look, for example, there's a quarter of an egg in the protein group, you know, and, um, you know, like a, a 
I don't know, six or seven beans, and people will wonder, is that a portion size? Because we're so used to thinking portion sizes, and really they're not. They're just examples of what you could put on the plate. Right. Um, but the visual representation is great. Long-term memory stores and pictures, not words. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. There's lots of Canadians that have issues with numer- numeracy and literacy, and so being able to show a picture is uh, is really powerful. And and the vibrant colors and all the healthy, like delicious-looking samples of food gives people so many ideas as a jump start for how to pull together a meal. So it does so that one picture does so much to communicate healthy eating. Okay. I agree. Yeah. Cool. No, yeah, I, I wondered that myself when I took a look at that. Mm-hmm. So just one of the things I actually wanted to touch on really quickly, you mentioned, um, you know, there's a, a, a change um, where the focus is more on plant-based eating versus animal products. Now, mm-hmm. this has created a bit of a debate. Um, can you tell us your perspective on this? What, yeah, sure. Well, one thing, I think it shouldn't, I think you're right. I think it has created a debate because when you start to talk about plant-based eating, then it kind of pits animal and plant-based foods. And I don't think there should be a debate. I think in their whole, the naturally nutrient-rich state, like say just like, you know, sirloin steak or a piece of salmon, you know, these are foods, um, are naturally nutrient-rich foods. Um, like, And it's really the a focus on thinking about whether the foods are very processed or not that I think we should be focusing on. Again, that 50% of our calories coming from highly processed foods, well, a lot of them are plant-based. So that doesn't mean that they're automatically healthier or better for us. Um, And interestingly, actually, at the Canadian Nutrition Society conference this past spring in Niagara, the director general with the Office of Nutrition with Health Canada said, you know, one of the big myths they're trying to dispel is that the food diet is, is vegan and that uh, the protein group has got lots of flexibility and there's animal and plant-based foods there because they are, they recognize they make a valuable contribution to a healthy diet. So um, my position is really to focus on trying to get people to eat those wholesome foods in their closest to their natural state and maybe focus a little less on whether it's a plant or an animal-based food and focus more on, is it highly processed? Are you eating fish or fish sticks? Like, you know, Mm -hmm. are you eating barley or is it a sweetened cookie that's plant-based that's got some barley flour in it? Like, Mm -hmm. um, I think that's uh, important. And I don't think it's been really highlighted in the media very much. And that's why I like to highlight that. Oh, some ex- missed message. Yeah. yeah, no, some ex- uh, excellent points there. That's um, very interesting. Yeah. Um, have you seen lots of claims for plant-based things on foods now? I'm right. It pop up all over and not necessarily better for you. So marketers are using it as a health halo. Mm-hmm. Just like gluten-free, mm-hmm. right? Like the just gluten- like gluten-free, yes. just like low-fat. And, mm-hmm. people, and a lot of consumers, we just, we, we're, we're busy, we're tired. We, and um, I think a lot of people could be duped into thinking, oh, I guess that's good, you know, a plant-based sweetened cereal. It's healthy. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. they have that label on it. No, for sure. For yeah. sure. Um, I can imagine for many people that it's probably hard to achieve that recommendation of filling half their plates with veggies and or yeah, fruit. Sure um, what tips, uh, do you have any tips that could help people mm-hmm. reach that goal of doing the half and half? Yeah, well, one thing I would love for folks to know and for all the, you know, CanFit Pro members that are doing a good job of trying to share out healthy eating messages is to remember to keep it simple and not to feel overwhelmed. So if you're not doing half your plate breakfast, lunch, and dinner, guess what? Most people aren't, but we can all take small steps to get to there. So it's all about baby steps. It's all about keeping it simple. Um, So advice that I would give honestly is things like, Just whatever vegetables and fruits you like to eat now, eat more of them. If you love apples, have an extra apple like a Mm -hmm. day, you know, what for, uh, you know, or if you're putting grilled vegetables on your plate, you know, don't think that you have to have a lot of different kinds of veggie side dishes. Just put an extra scoop on your plate. So um, eat more of what you love. And um, the other thing too, is to think about healthy convenience. So I've been amazed that over the last, you know, few years, how the healthy convenience choices in the veggie and fruit category have really exploded. Like if you take your time, have you noticed at the grocery store, you can get chopped, washed, ready like salads and the sugar snap peas and the grape tomatoes and the carrots and the baby cukes. So if you're, Mm -hmm. yeah, like there's just so many choices. So just like slow down in that produce section and just see what's um, available that's convenient and um, that suits your lifestyle, right? In order to make it accessible and, and doable. 
Mm -hmm. Because a lot of us have good intentions. We think, oh, on Sunday, I'm going to wash and chop. And so if you can do that, great. But if you know that, you know what, that's just, you know, not something that I can achieve, then look for those healthy, convenient options. And then, sorry, the third idea, which I think is really helpful, too, because it's a time saver, and time is the biggest barrier to healthy eating, is just to make extra veggies. So if you are chopping uh, carrots up to go in something, just chop up some extra and then have a plan for them to use them later on in the week. So you might say, well, I'll, I'm going to put these chopped carrots in my salad, but um, tomorrow I can grill them on the barbecue. Or I can uh, make extra grilled vegetables. I'm going to make a frittata for dinner tomorrow. I'm just going to chop them up put them with some eggs, stick them in the oven, and dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. So make extra vegetables and have a plan for how you're going to use them. Cut down on your prep time. That makes it easier. I Actually, that's a really good point. I find that's something we do at our house, too, is make sure, you know, instead of keeping the carrots in the bag in the fridge, you know, we set it up so the kids are involved. They chop up the, mm -hmm. the, the carrots, the celery. You know, they get the little um, tomatoes washed. We get cucumber yeah. cut up. It's all in there. And same with the fruits because... Um, it, it's just so much easier. It cuts down on yeah. that time. And I think it's not even something we realize when we think, oh, I should have an apple. But the thought of, oh, I got to wash the apples or I've got to do that. Like, having true. everything ready and done, it may take That's that little point. bit of prep, but you know, it does help in the long run when you just want to grab and go and it's an it, e easier choice, right? Yeah. It makes a difference between being out and, you know, reaching for like a little, you know, mm -hmm. container of veggies that you have or thinking, oh, I'll go and get a muffin right? Right. or like a donut or something. Exactly. You know, those are all great tips and getting them out of the crisper and up where you can see them, having a bowl of fresh fruit. Like I always keep one at my front door. So for all the kids, it's like if they're heading out the door and they're thinking, yeah, I'll be gone for a while. Oh, I'll grab a banana. I'll grab a tangerine or an apple and just put it in their bag. And then there's no excuse to to not uh, to not eat it when you make it so easy for people. And yeah, and that's a really it, you're more yeah. likely to eat it. Yeah. That's actually a really good idea. I think I might have to steal that one. Um, mm -hmm. So um, and, and, and really, too, it like you were saying before, you know, it's little steps. So it really is progress over perfection. Right. It's taking yeah. those small steps. You know, sometimes you may take a step, couple of steps back, but it's always working forward and just that little bit of progress more than perfection, right? So Yeah, just like in yeah. our fitness classes, yep. how often I hear the fitness leaders say, you know, everyone's flexibility is at different levels or a strength. Like, you know, you just right. start where you're at and try and try to do better. And, um, and some days we do better than other days. And uh, because I think when we beat ourselves up for not achieving our goals, we, we take like three steps back. And, right, uh, right. Yeah. So just being reasonable and um, with ourselves and know that some days, some days we'll reach that half your plate and, and some days we won't. But um, it's it's just like fitness. You just get, you just get back on track and, and do your best. Perfect. No, excellent yeah. advice. Um, just wanted to ask you actually a little bit um, in referring to the Camp Pro Healthy Eating and Weight Loss Coach Certification. It yeah. teaches a lot of the concepts of integrated nutrition. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe could you touch a little bit on the similarities between the HWL food pyramid and wheel of integrated nutrition and Canada's new food guide? Do you see any, yeah. any of those yeah. uh, similarities? Well, I did have for the first time a, a quick look at that and thanks for sending along. So some similarities for sure with the, the Canada's food guide would be a focus on water as a beverage of choice to quench thirst. So, um, that's a strong message in uh, both the food guide and in your integrated um, nutrition approach. Uh, focusing on foods that are closest to their natural state, so the least processed. Now, I also like to highlight that doesn't mean that you know. Fro I always like to highlight. So, like yogurt is processed, but of course, yogurt is healthy. We know that. Um, well, uh, yogurts that maybe you know aren't like ultra super sweet, for right. example, but. Mm -hmm. Um, or frozen vegetables. Yes, they've got a few steps of processing in them, but you can tell what they're what they were originally. Like <laughs> you know, you know that those exactly. were vegetables. Um, so I like that there's there's consistency there on focusing on whole foods and at the top of your pyramid how you've got you know really a, a highlight on limiting the ultra processed foods. I think that um, the food guide and the pyramid are aligned there. Um, and uh, and the focus to eat lots of vegetables and fruits. So I could see lots of uh, lots of parallel messages for sure. Excellent. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, just kind of to wrap up our call today, and I just wanted to ask you overall, what are the top mm -hmm. three things that we should take away from the new food guide 
and how we should approach this food guide as fitness profession, fitness professionals when we're working with our clients and our participants. Right. Well, one thing we've kind of highlighted this is really to um, focus on keeping advice simple. Um, and it's because, again, people want to do the right thing, but the pressures of life take over. And if we can't offer uh, very easy to adopt ideas. They're not things that people are going to be able to stick with in the long run. So while we might think, oh, the back to basics, ho-hum is kind of boring, it's actually still really like the best advice. So focusing on cooking and eating, you know, together at home more often. Um, looking at that eat well plate and having people make goals for trying to improve, even with just one part of the plate. So maybe they're maybe half of their plate is grains and they're saying I should really make it a quarter and make more room for protein, for example, which helps to sustain us. And when you're physically active, we all know uh, protein is really important for maintaining muscle mass and building muscle mass. Right. Uh, so it's, it, or it's the vegetables. So uh, keeping advice simple for people and focusing on, I think just reinforcing that eat well plate, because if people only did that, that would be huge. So don't underestimate, what a big difference that would be for people to just get their plates in proportion because we're so far from that. I mean, remember, 50% of our calories are from ultra-processed foods. We are so far from making half our plate vegetables and fruits and choosing quality proteins, et cetera. So that's one thing. That, mm -hmm. And then the other thing, I think, is um, really to enjoy uh, or focus on enjoying good food for better health as opposed to a focus for weight loss. So I think a lot of people might look to fitness leaders as being people who give them guidance on, on weight loss. And we know from the research that if you focus on better overall health, and I'm, I'm thinking like mental health and physical health together, um, better sleep, all of these things, you're more likely to have success. And to be honest with you, we can't always predict what's going to happen with people's weight because we're always so, we're all so individual and there's so much variability that you can't promise that someone's going to um, be losing weight and you can set them up for disappointment and that affects their mental health. Um, Cause how do you feel when you feel like you should be achieving something and you can't achieve it? And you know, your body's going to do what it's going to do when you right. eat healthy. You've just got to accept like the way you eat healthy and you're, and you're active and, and you, t and you follow, you know, general healthy principles and become in different shapes and sizes. We have to accept that. Exactly, um, exactly. I think that's really important. And I, I see that a lot more with fitness professionals. And it's so refreshing and different from when I used to teach fitness classes in the 80s. So that's great. And then rather than maybe a focus on plant based foods, like I talked before, think whole foods, like, think about are your foods like closest to their natural state, that's more important than trying to think is it a plant or an animal based because if we focus on that, and we don't address the issue that 50% of our calories are coming from ultra processed foods, we're going to miss the tsunami of health problems that are going to come our way. So that I think is something that we really need to uh, maybe give more attention to. Amazing. Thank you. You totally summed that up really well in those three, three points and uh, um, very valuable information. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing with us today. And um, and be able Thanks to chat about me. that. And uh, yeah. that was wonderful. So I really look forward to uh, having another call with you and uh, discussing okay. some more nutrition based things along the way. But um, thank you. I appreciate you joining us. And yeah, um, yeah it's great. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. And thank um, you. we will I'd be love in to give a shout out, shout out to all the fitness leaders that help people to live healthier, happier lives too. I think they're doing a great job too. So yes, definitely. Cheers for all those folks. Definitely. So I agree with you. <laughs> okay. All right. Thanks so <laughs> thank much, you. Carol. We'll talk okay. to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.